we are going to just jump right into the next speaker, our keynote speaker for today, Sandra. But I believe all of us are appreciating what level we are at as, Afri as Africa at large and what we need to put in more effort in in order to achieve our goal in synthetic biology. So join me to welcome Sandra Martini, our chairperson, as she gives her talk on the positioning in bio to meet challenges of the 21st century. Sandra. A very good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Kampala. We are really so excited to host you here in Kampala. My name is Sandra Martini, and I am the chairperson, executive committee of Sinbio Africa. I have been as well the co-chair for the organizing committee of this conference. And so standing before you and seeing this hall full as it is, it really gives me such a great joy. So welcome once again. I'm going to give us the African perspective of how we can be able to position ourselves and harness the opportunities that synthetic biology offer. And for us to do that, with everyone else around, I believe um, the number of us who are in this room, and we are still asking the question of what exactly this synthetic biology is. So for my talk, I will give us some insights into what synthetic biology is and what are those things that it can help us as Africa to move from where we are and get to where we should be. There are a lot of opportunities that synthetic biology offers. And we have been able to see some of the things from the places that we've gone to, the conferences that we've gone to, and the great things that people are doing. But I think one question that we need to ask ourselves is, why aren't we doing these things on the African continent? And we hope and believe that from here, we can be able to leverage the networks that we shall have established here. And those who are willing to come with us on this journey, those who have already walked down this journey, inclusive of them are people who are the organizations that supported this, generously supported this conference. And then we can forge the way forward and see how uh, synthetic biology can thrive in Africa. Okay. So that, uh, the title of the talk is Positioning Synbio to Meet the Challenges of the 21st Century. And particularly, we shall be focusing on Africa. So what is synthetic biology? In the simplest terms, we are looking at a concept that involves the application of engineering, uh, engineering principles to design and construct new biological parts, devices and systems, or redesign already existing natural biological systems for useful purposes. So biology has always been here with us, 
But how can we leverage more on biology? And synthetic biology is the answer to that. It gives us the opportunity to create better systems um, that can do much more than what the natural systems can. And so why can't we embrace synthetic biology and see how we can address some of the grand challenges that we have as Africa? So particularly synthetic biology brings together different people, save for other fields where you would say maybe in this particular field you're only talking about scientists. For synthetic biology, it calls upon everyone to get on board. It doesn't matter whether you're a social scientist, you have a role to play, and the different other fields. So this offers new approaches to studying biology. So as you can hear, synthetic biology, it's a field of biology, but then we are studying biology in you know, different uh, concepts, uh, using different approaches. And basically, synthetic biology reverses the traditional approaches to understanding the mechanisms of life. So the traditional biological approaches we are looking at how the existing systems perform. So you have a system, and then you want to see how can this system perform. If it's put under stress, would it handle the stress? The difference with synthetic biology is you're asking yourself, if I can be able to redesign this system, can it be able to handle a particular maybe amount of stress? So in other words, with synthetic biology, you're being more proactive as opposed to just watching things happen as they may want to happen. We would want to know where does the concept of synthetic biology come about? So we we could have known synthetic biology from the, from the 80s, but right from the time of the discovery of DNA by Watson and Crick, the idea of synthetic biology was already coming to, uh, into existence. So after that, in the 1970s, there was the creation of the recombinant uh, DNA and around 1974, one of the gen uh, genetists by the name of Waklau Sizbalski coined the word synthetic biology. And then we go in, uh, in the 80s where we have technical innovations, we have the rapid DNA sequencing, and then we have a lot of the synthetic biology initiatives coming into play. So roughly, we could say synthetic biology has been here for quite a while, and we've seen so much that other continents have been able to rip out of it. Why not us? So this is the time. So as I had earlier mentioned, as synthetic biology community, it welcomes everyone. Everyone has a role to play. It doesn't matter whether you're doing engineering, you're doing social sciences, you're doing computer science, you're doing bioinformatics, everyone has a role to play. So I believe each one of us in this room find a place where we belong when we look at this cartoon. So why is synthetic biology even that special? It is a new approach to studying and understanding biology. And particularly, it's one of the few fields where we are seeing the application of, engineer, of engineering 
in um, uh, living systems designing. And then it doesn't necessarily depend on hierarchical research. So here we have different people making a contribution, including the community people. We have so many of community labs now um, uh, being established. We have a lot of input from the different uh, persons, not necessarily waiting upon the, the researchers as we always knew the scientists, but everyone can, can be able to make a contribution to this. And then very importantly, from the onset, there is always inclusion of social concern. I think that is very evident from even the title of our conference. We are looking at synthetic biology, but we can't disassociate it from biosecurity. And why? From the very initial time we are thinking of, we want to create these systems, we want to ensure that there are systems with uh, the people will be safe, we shall not be able to cause um, any dangers to, to the people or animals or the environment. And so that is one thing which is quite unique equally to uh, synthetic biology. So looking at what synthetic biology is and having an insight of what, uh, what role each one of us plays we want to now see what are some of Africa's challenges to which synthetic biology could be a solution. And of course, one very key one is food security. Africa happens to be one of the countries with a lot of food uh, produced. But it's at the same time that you have so many people going hungry. So if you can see from the upper picture, people barely have anything to eat. And right below it, there is food going to waste. So as, as the people of, of our time, as the people who are looking at creating solutions for our uh, generations and generations to come, what are we doing about this? We can see so many people, um, up to 20% of Africa uh, population being nourished, and so many others not being sure whether they will be able to get the next meal. But this can change. The burden of disease. I'll particularly talk about uh, HIV. And for the uh, sub-Saharan Africa, that's the eastern, the southern part of Africa, it harbors the highest burden of HIV. But if you, you looked at, when it comes to the um, treatment, when it comes to the different interventions. If you wanted to find out what the African contribution to it is, other than always probably receiving some um, funding and then importing the, the drugs that have to be used, what more can we do in this area? There are also other challenges. And of course, poverty is a big one. We have the increasing population, which puts pressure on all the resources that could be available. Climate change, deforestation, water security, air pollution. So all this, we are familiar with these challenges. So what does synthetic biology promise? I'll so much put emphasis on agriculture because agriculture is the backbone of Africa. And with food, 
when people have been able to get what to eat, maybe you can be able to get solutions to other things. Otherwise, you can't do so much when people are hungry. So synthetic biology, with the fact that we are able to design new systems, we can be able to cultivate nutrient-enriched plants or crops. And what, what would that mean? We have food for our people, but we would also be tackling the issue of malnutrition, which we saw there. We have the production of preservatives such as nisin and artificial flavors and fragrances. We saw food being wasted. So what can synthetic biology offer us that we can be able to tackle the problem of wasting food? So we may not waste food when some of our people are going hungry. Production of drought resistant crops. We have a lot of research that happens in this area, but in majority of our countries, you'll find that the research only stops in the laboratory. A lot of resources are put in that research the scientists do a lot of work. But the people who should be gaining from this use of resources end up not getting that, what the research is intended for. Then we can be able to have plants that we do not need to use extra fertilizers to, uh, to plant, to produce. And what would that mean? We would be able to cut on costs of, of production, and maybe such resources can be um, channeled to other things. The production of drought-resistant crops, it's a very key one. We've been hearing a lot of change in climate, even from our own, uh, what we see. Previously, we used to know the seasons, the rain seasons, when they would be, and when the dry seasons would be, but it's no longer the case. So that means the time when our people think they should be planting crops for them to be able to go through the next season, when they expect the rain, the rain is not there. And then if we are not in position to get the solutions to this, then who is going to do that? Of course, there are so many other applications of synthetic biology. We have uh, biosensors and these are applicable in different um, sectors, including the medical, agriculture. Can we be able to um, detect maybe pests and diseases? Can we be able to, you know, detect pollution in the environment? That is one of the, also one of the things that synthetic biology can do for us. We have bioremediation. We all keep complaining about how our environment is getting polluted. We dispose a lot of um, waste into the environment. And then after that, I don't know who else we expect to get the solutions to those problems. I truly believe, as people who are in this room, we can be able to together forge the way forward for some of this. 
things. Other applications, we already talked about the healthcare applications, I talked about the medical, but very particularly, I would like to bring to our attention the COVID-19 vaccine. We have been, as, in, as in Bio Africa, we've been trying to spread the gospel of synthetic biology across board. But majority of our people only know it in terms of the GMO food. And so they never bother to even hear what you want to say. They really just think you become an enemy of your own people. But these are some of the opportunities that may come, definitely the, the pandemic was a challenge, but in it, there is a lot that we can leverage on. We, we can't beat ourselves because of the past. We lost our loved ones. But we will not be doing ourselves a service if we leave it at that after we've lost our loved ones and we have an opportunity to use such you know information to rally any support that we may need to be able to leverage such um, opportunities that synthetic biology offers we have synthetic biofuels we have synthetic uh, biology industrial chemicals the feedstocks polymers enzymes and so many more. There have been challenges and maybe there will be. But if we discuss them, if we discuss them, we can be able to as well get the solutions. These are some of the big challenges when it comes to synthetic biology implementation in Africa regulatory cha uh, challenges. There has been some uh, regulatory framework in place for maybe some uh, fields, but you may find that they are not adequate for synthetic biology. Then we have the technological challenges, limited equipment and other resources, budget allocation, most times it's never there for such um, works. Then there are also those social things where people just don't want to deal with this whole thing. They are so negative. What are the strategies? We ought to establish and implement a whole encompassing regulatory framework establish uh, structures that foster worldwide collaborations and networking. I believe we, we are on the journey of this particular one. Develop other areas that relate to synthetic biology. For example, bioinformatics, DNA sequencing, maintaining the inclusiveness of the field as I earlier mentioned, everyone has a role to play. So we shouldn't wake up and we are like, hey, you know what? The social scientists w shouldn't be here. The next time you need them, they will have moved on. Then we have engagement of policy with, um, uh, with business, regulatory and, sorry, uh, engagement with business, regulatory and uh, policy forming teams. And very importantly, we need to engage the, the public. We need the public trust if we are going to do uh, much in this area. Then research infrastructure, we need to plan and allocate funding for this. We need to see how we can get academia and industry to see where each one of them fit in the same puzzle. Because sometimes we have a lot of ideas that are generated, a lot of research is done, 
but then we don't have the funding for the subsequent works. So we need to take this really serious and see how we can bring the people who are going to support the, the later process after the lab. Establishing of training systems that encourage multidisciplinary training of students. If you're doing microbiology, I don't think you should necessarily only have supervisors who are in the area of microbiology. You're only going to get very good at it, and then you'll barely have any knowledge in any other um, area. Then development of technolog uh, technology platforms that people can use to do um, their work. In this whole puzzle, where does Sinbio Africa lie? What role is Sinbio Africa willing to play? As Sinbio Africa, we are committing and proposing to establish a center of excellence in synthetic biology and biosecurity in Africa. The different areas we want to focus on is in research development, innovation hub, capacity development, biosafety and biosecurity, bioinformatics, and data science. So we, we are very well placed, so to say, because we have a bit of representation in a number of countries across the globe. And we hope, once we are able to establish the center of excellency, then we can be able to establish hubs all over Africa, and then we see how we can propel synthetic biology forward. And we could, and then uh, with that, I believe the prayers like of our very own the guest of honor will come to fruition. She will be able to see our own local products just across the road. I would want to leave you with this quote. You should never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Because indeed, it is the only thing that ever has and that was by Margaret Maid. Thank you so much. <laughs>